It seems like every week we hear about another data breach. There's a lot of folklore around what happens with the pilfered data. We hear ominous words like dark web, cybercrime, and hackers that conjure images of a dangerous, unknown underground. In truth, though, most online attacks and breaches are economically motivated. Well, it's true that certain nation-state actors are sometimes involved in targeting specific assets. The people behind most attacks, by and large, are simply interested in monetizing their activity. Likewise, victims, be they individual users or corporations, may fall short of using proper defenses. Not because these defenses are not available, but because they may not be very practical. That is, they are either not very usable, or they get in the way of getting real work done. My research group tries to gain a better understanding of how both attackers and targets operate. To do so, we are building on a field called security analytics. We collect large amounts of data about user and attacker behavior, analyze it, and from the analysis derive insights on how to build better, more secure systems. For instance, we have been collecting and analyzing cells on anonymous online marketplaces, what people refer to as the dark web, for the past seven years. This has allowed us to understand the business models malicious parties use to generate profit. Along the same lines, we've shown that the thousands of illicit online pharmacies are actually supported by a relatively small ecosystem of advertising. Our work really demystified this entire set of illicit online activity. In the end, they are supported by pretty boring supply and demand economics. And boring is good, because boring means predictable, which in turn helps us propose good defenses at the technological, economic, and policy levels. On the user side, we've analyzed data from dozens of thousands of users to understand how they create and select passwords. This has led us to understand that the supposed trade-off between security and usability was actually an illusion. It's possible to have both strong and memorable passwords. Our work led us to build tools that help users select such passwords. This combines fancy technical bits, such as the use of neural networks, to come up with fast, scalable password guessing, with user interface design so that users respond well to our findings. It's an exciting time to do research in security and privacy. The amount of data available to make meaningful observations and influence both technical design and policy is unprecedented. In the 20th century, most policymakers were lawyers. In the 21st century, we are betting many of them will be computer scientists, and our research is equipping them with the technical tools and knowledge to make our society safer and more just.